Many thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this week's video. Y'all have been absolutely loving the Lightroom videos lately, and me being the, the people pleaser that I am, have another good one for you today, all about the essential Lightroom tricks that I use daily. That'll not only save you a, a great deal of time, but also make you a much more efficient and effective when it comes to editing your photos. Now, all of these tricks have showed up at a at really random times throughout videos here and there over the years, and, and each time they make an appearance, I often receive incredible feedback regarding whichever trick happens to be mentioned in said video. So I wanted to create this video today as sort of kind of like a, a compilation video covering all the essential Lightroom tricks I use daily that really have had the, or that have received, I should say, the, the greatest amount of positive feedback. So without further ado to jump right into it, and these are not rated in, in any specific order whatsoever. And I believe there's a, a total of, don't quote me on this, but I think there's a total of 13. I'll know at the very end exactly how many there was, but uh, I believe there's 13. But the very first one is something that I, I often forget I even have enabled, but it's something that I call solo mode. And if you're kind of a, an organizational, um, I guess, uh, or a neat freak, if you will, you're really going to love this one. So whenever you're, you're editing a photo in Lightroom, you know, let's say you open up the tone curve and maybe you open up the HSL color panel and then the color grading section, and maybe you have the, the detail section open. Before you know it, you, you get to this point where you have to start scrolling through all of these things to, to find anything, and it can just become a lot and the more things you open the the more uh, unorganized things get then you have to go in and manually close each section or you can come over here anywhere really and just right click and hit solo mode and solo mode is automatically going to collapse everything except one section now the beauty of solo mode is this so if I want to come over here to the basic section, you'll notice that the detail section closed. If I want to come over here to the tone curve, the basic section closed. If I come down to detail, the tone curves or whatever section I had open before closes. So you can only have one section open at a time and it automatically closes the other one. So if you are into organization, you will absolutely love this one right here. Now, something else that I think is absolutely fantastic and it's something, it's just basically the, the shortcut key why, and anyone who has followed any of my videos before knows that I'm a huge fan of before and after. Now, there's multiple different ways to see before and after in Lightroom, which I think is absolutely fantastic. But the, I think what's so powerful about that is the fact that when you're editing a photo, it's really, really easy to lose a frame of reference from where you began or lose the frame of reference where you were just a few adjustments ago. So it's very powerful to be able to see this before and after in multiple different ways. And the shortcut key Y is absolutely fantastic. So this is just an, an image from my uh, uh, Oregon Coast Workshop in October of this past year. And if I just hit the shortcut key Y, this is a great way to see the before and after up on the same up at the same time. So it's not necessarily a toggle switch. It basically gives you the view, both views at the same exact time, which I think is pretty um, pretty helpful. You know, of course, this right here is the raw image. This right here is the final edit. You can see right here before and after. So if I hit the shortcut key Y and turn this off, we get back to that mode right there. Now, this next one, I don't really know what the name of this is. I kind of call it the specific color picker. Uh, but um, it's very, very beneficial. And it's one of those things that I don't want to say it was an aha moment, but it was definitely one of those things that kind of stumped me for a minute. I was like, I never really uh, paid much attention to that. And uh, here's a good example right here. So if I come over here to the HSL section, of course, we have everything laid out here, the hue, saturation and luminance. And if we want to, let's just say, boost the saturation of all the greens right through here, we're going to come over here to the saturation section, come over here to the green slider and just kind of rock this back and forth and pull it up. And you can see that it's impacting the greens as expected. But what's interesting about this is if I reset this, each one of these sections has this little icon, little device, this little picker, if you will, next to each section. And if you click on it, so we're going to come over here to saturation, we'll click on this and let's just drag it over to an area of green and let's just kind of slide our cursor up. You'll notice that it's actually impacting the green channel very, very little. And almost all of that is yellow as I continue to drag this up and we, we rock it back and forth. You can see that there's actually more yellow there than green in the first place. So I'm going to kind of push this up a little bit. But what is so, so cool is that when you use that color picker, wherever, whatever pixels you have that on, Lightroom is going to automatically adjust those pixels accordingly. So it's, what's interesting is when you just look at an image like we just did and we're like, oh, I'm going to, I'm going to increase the saturation of the green channel. And you do that and you think it works, but then when you use that color picker, you realize that, wow, there's, 
there's actually a lot there's more colors in there than green you know and if i pick other areas of this it'll start to impact you can see like the orange is being impacted a little bit i can come over here to the blue and you can see that that's blue and aqua so there's a lot of different ways to use that and you're going to also have it with the luminance and the hue so those little specific color pickers are very very helpful now something else that um you know i I don't want to admit this, but I'm a pixel peeper. I like to uh, to to really dive into the, the details of photos, and I think a lot of people do as well. And the shortcut key Z is a fantastic way to do that. So instead of actually having to, to come up here and, and drop this down and pick a zoom level, if you just hit the shortcut key Z, that's automatically going to zoom you in. And what's cool is you can come over here to your thumbnail and just kind of drag this around to any area that you want to zoom in on. And let's see, I didn't even notice that little house out there in the distance or you can just pick any certain areas like this, but just hitting that shortcut key Z is a very, very quick way to just kind of punch in and punch out on a uh, photo to, to do that kind of pixel peeping that we all don't like to admit that we do, but uh, I think a lot of people uh, definitely enjoy it. Uh, I know I do. Now, this next one, once again, I don't know the name of it. I just call it the shift double click, but it's something that is a, a very helpful thing. So if I come over here to the basic section, and as you can see, this is actually a TIFF file. This is already edited. Uh, I've already did my kind of final touches in Photoshop, brought it back into Lightroom, and just did a couple subtle tweaks here. But if you actually hold down the shift key, you can click any of these sliders. So if I hold down the shift key and double click highlights, you can see it made a change. Double click shadows, made a change. Double click whites, it made a change. And what that's doing is giving Lightroom the ability to go ahead and make what it feels is the necessary change. And it's just based off of the histogram. It's just trying to, to uh, evenly distribute the histogram a little bit. It's not always exactly what it should be, but I think it's great for uh, as a kind of a leading indicator as to where things might possibly, where you might want to possibly move a, a particular slider. So it doesn't mean you actually have to leave it here, but maybe you want to bring the whites down just a little bit. But what I think is really helpful is that it just kind of gives you an idea as to, oh, maybe I do want to bring the highlights down a little bit, or maybe I do want to, to boost the shadows up a little bit. But just holding down that shift key and double clicking on any of these will definitely uh, kind of just, like I said, give you that kind of leading indicator as to um, what you might want to do with a particular, uh, particular image. Now, something else that's really cool is you know, when we look at Lightroom here, there's a lot of stuff all over the place. You know, you got stuff over here, you got all these little menu bars, you got histograms, you got menus all over. It's easy for things to get a, a little bit cluttered. If you hit the shortcut key L, it's something that's called lights out. So hitting L will just kind of dim everything. Now you can still see, you can still see a little bit over here. If you hit L one more time, that's going to black everything out. And this is just a great way to, start to review a photograph. I like to, to do this and kind of step back. I get out of my chair, walk back maybe five or 10 feet and look at my image from a far distance without any clutter around, surrounded by a dark background. And I feel like that's a really great way to kind of just look at your overall composition, look at your overall edit, see if there's anything that kind of sticks out that you don't like. But that lights out feature is absolutely fantastic and something that I find incredibly useful. And if you want to turn it off, you just hit the shortcut key L one more time. Now, this next tip is something that or a trick or shortcut is one that um, I actually I use all of these uh, almost every single day. I, I should say I use them on just about every single photo that I edit, but this is one that I use on hands down every single one and it's the clipping indicator and you can enable it by using the shortcut key j so in this particular image here if i hit the shortcut key j anything that is in red up here these are going to be overexposed highlights and as you or i'm sorry overexposed highlights over here so you can see that those are all in red everything in blue those are underexposed shadows so these are going to be areas of pure black that don't contain any detail at all or another way to say it those areas are just too dark and then up here, this area of overexposed highlights or blown highlights is area of pure white. And once again, these are areas that are pure white and have way or have no detail whatsoever. And they're too bright. You need to bring that exposure down. So if I come up here to highlights, let's just start to bring this down. You'll notice that that area in red starts to go away. So somewhere to about right there. And then the same thing with the shadows. If I want to bring up the shadows a little bit, you'll notice that the blue starts to fade away. I could also bring up the black slider as well, and that will help remove some of those areas to a point right there. And uh, you don't have to make all of these areas go away. Like that right there is, is really fine. But if you did want to remove it totally, you just kind of bring down those highlights to a point right there. And now when I hit the shortcut key J and toggle it on and off, 
you don't see any of those areas any longer. So that clipping indicator is absolutely fantastic because it's an instant way to see if there's areas of your photograph that are too dark or if there's areas of your photograph that are too bright. So that is something that I think is, is wildly beneficial. Now, this next one is something that I, I, I love to do. I'm probably saying that on all of these, but I'm a big fan of dodging and burning. Anyone who watches my videos knows that I love dodging and burning and I really enjoy doing it in Lightroom as well. So if I come up here and let's drop down, let's create a new mask. So I'm gonna hit create new mask. I'm gonna come over here to radial gradient. And let's say that I, I'm sorry, I don't wanna do a radial gradient. Let me uh, delete this right here, create a new mask. And I am going to come over here to the brush. So let's say that I want to just kind of bring out a little bit of a additional exposure or dodge certain areas of the rocks, just kind of make them pop a little bit, kind of draw the viewer's eye into the center of the photograph. So I'm gonna come over here and I'm just gonna paint on this brush, on this rock right here. Now, if I wanna come over here and paint this rock that is much smaller, I could come over here to the size of the brush and start to adjust it that way, or I could use the left and right bracket key. So the left and right bracket key adjusts the overall size of the brush. So if I hit the left bracket key, you can see that that is making it smaller. So now I can come over here and paint this one, make it even smaller to paint this one right here, and maybe a little bit bigger by hitting the right bracket key to paint this one right here, maybe a little bit bigger to paint this one right here with the right bracket key again, and you can kind of see where I'm going with this, but doing that is so much easier than bouncing back and forth trying to make these tiny little changes on these little sliders because I find those sliders sometimes, especially with the little tiny arrow and the little um, mouse pointer, trying to make those little adjustments, it, it's difficult sometimes. So. I'm always a fan of shortcut keys and the left and right bracket key is absolutely fantastic. It makes it much, much easier. Now, the, the, while we're on this example here, another fantastic one is the shortcut key O, which automatically toggles any mask overlays on and off. So if I hit the shortcut key O, you can see that those mask overlays are turned off, turned back on, on and off, on and off, on and off. And it's just much easier in my opinion than having to come over here and hit this little check mark right here. So. Hitting that shortcut key O, I think is a, a fantastic way to just kind of speed up that process and not put you in the position of having to, to check little check boxes or, or move little sliders here and there, these kind of minute distances. Now, this next one, which I believe is number 10, if I'm, I think it's 10, and it's something that's called survey mode and the shortcut key is N. And what's so powerful about this, let me come up here to the library, come down here, I'm gonna highlight these, these four images. You can see they're all the same. And if I hit the shortcut key N to survey these, you can see them all on your screen at the same time. And why I think this is so powerful is because, and I made an entire video before on, the, on this topic before, where I like to create versions of photographs with small differences. Maybe some versions have colors that are boosted a little bit, or maybe one version has a little bit more contrast than the other version or more shadow recovery than another. And then I like to look at them all on my screen here, and that helps me determine which one I like a little bit better. You can tell that this one has got more saturation, a little bit more contrast. This one looks like it has the clarity and texture turned down. It's a little bit smoother of a version. This one right here definitely has less contrast. And by, but by being able to see all of these at the same exact time, this helps me to determine which one of these I think is absolutely the one that looks the best. And when you do determine that, you can just double click on that one and it'll take you right there. So I think that that is super, super helpful. Now, something else, let me go to the next image here, that I find incredibly helpful is whenever you're cropping it in, and I, I love to crop photographs, I shouldn't say I love to crop photographs, but I, I often ha find myself in situations where a crop is needed to kind of refine a composition or to possibly you know, eliminate something distracting on the edge of the photograph that I happen to have missed when I was on location. So if I come up here to the develop module and let's come over here to crop, you can see that it automatically has your crop overlay. But if you hit the shortcut key O, shortcut key o when you are in the crop tool, you'll see that it automatically cycles through these different crop overlays. And I think it's just really cool to, to be able to access those because sometimes it can kind of create a little bit of additional, I don't know, creativity when you're cropping a photograph to determine exactly how you want to uh, compose it or how you want to, uh, I should say, ref refine your composition with the crop tool. So just hitting the shortcut key O just kind of cycles through this right through here, which I think is super, super helpful. Now, and let me close this down real quick here. And to stick with the topic that we were talking about earlier about the before and after keys, so or I should say 
being able to see before and after versions of photographs, I think it's super powerful because you lose your frame of reference as you're going through your editing process. But by utilizing the backslash key, that is another way. And there's actually one more way too. But if we come over here to the calibration section, and let's just say that I want to kind of toggle this back and forth a little bit and make a little a couple refinements here, something like that. And if I hit the short key, key backslash, you can see I, it's a great way to just see exactly where you came with your edit. And I think it's really powerful when you're editing color, as, you, as we can see here. You know, this is where it started. This is where we're at right now. So utilizing that backslash key is super, super powerful. And then of course, if you, the final one, let's just make some random changes here. If you make some changes and you don't really like the way they look, yeah, you could go back and you could double click the word and that will automatically reset it. Or you can hit Command Z or Control Z, depending if you're on a Mac or a PC, and that will automatically kind of walk you back in your edits to um, kind of redo that, or I should say erase that change. So let me just show you exactly what I mean. So if we take these highlights and bring them all the way up to plus 90, and I say I don't like that, I can just hit Command Z and it'll undo that. If we take our shadows all the way up to plus 94 and I don't like that, I can hit Command Z and it'll undo that. Or you can just double click the word. So multiple different ways to, to kind of erase that. But those are the 13, I believe they're 13, things that I use daily. Those are the Lightroom tricks and shortcuts that uh, have become so second nature to where I don't even know that I'm doing them half the time. And I've, I've had, had, I have had them show up in videos before. And I get so many comments of people like, I, I didn't even know you could do that. What a time saver. And I think the more you use these, the more they become second nature and you become a much more efficient and much more effective photo editor. So I do hope that that information was helpful. And before I do wrap up this week's video, I just want to say a huge thank you to the, the longtime sponsor of the channel, which is Squarespace, who I use for all of my website and e-commerce needs. Squarespace provides a dynamic and attractive online platform to create your website. You can display your photography using Squarespace's professional portfolio designs and customize the layout and look and feel of your gallery just so you can make it your own. With Squarespace's traffic overview feature, you can track trends in page visits and views to better optimize your content. And you can even grow and engage with your customers with Squarespace's email campaign tools, which will enable you to create engaging emails that match your website with your products or blog posts and logo, just so your messaging remains consistent. So if you're looking to start a new website or possibly upgrade your current website, check out squarespace.com forward slash Mark Denny for a free trial and 10% off your first purchase. So I do hope you enjoyed this week's video, something a little bit different, but I think that uh, you will be able, or I hope you're able to pick up at least one shortcut or tip or trick that you were not aware of, something that you can apply to your workflow moving forward that you find to be incredibly helpful. If uh, you're able to get one helpful piece of information out of this week's video, that is my goal and that would make me a very happy person. So I do hope I achieve that in, uh, in this week's episode. Any questions, please leave them in the comment section below. I'll do my best to get back in touch with you as quickly as humanly, quickly as humanly, as fast as possible. And uh, if you enjoyed it, if you could give it a thumbs up, uh, subscribe to the channel if you're not subs subscribed already. Share the video with uh, your friends, your family, maybe your local photo club. I would greatly appreciate it. And as always, I really do appreciate you checking out this week's video. And I will see you all next Wednesday. Bye.